Hello everybody, how are you? Hope you're doing well. So we continue. Uh, today uh, we have a lecture number two for quantitative and qualitative research methods subject. Uh, today we have uh, an introduction to um, quantitative research methods. Um, so uh, I think uh, we have already, uh, you know, uh, defined what does mean about quantitative research method in the uh, previous lecture class. Uh, so uh, now we go see forward. What are the elements of quantitative research? Uh, you know, um, uh, first uh, we have a test and experiment and then uh, under control conditions. Uh, we have a cause and effect relationships, and, and also we uh, gathering numerical data objectively. Uh, results lend themselves to statistical analysis and evaluation of the result confirm or refute the original hypothesis. Uh, so again, uh, just a reminder is quantitative research is about confirming the theory. Uh, we have a question, uh, we have a phenomenon, uh, you know, which is not well understood, uh, raise some doubt or some questions. Uh, that question, uh, we will uh, go and find literature review and try to find previous empirical studies or uh, theories that explain that uh, uh, part of the phenomenon or that phenomenon. Uh, then uh, we will develop the hypothesis, then we collect data and analyze this data and based on the analysis we come to you know confirm or refute the original hypothesis or the theory. Uh, so we will go one by one. Um, first thing uh, that uh, we need in the quantitative research uh, what we call them, which is very important, uh, are variables. Variables should be developed you know, uh, from theories, concepts, models, and also previous empirical research. And so basically, uh, when we raise a question in quantitative research, you know, uh, uh, we, we, we have to go and see the literature review. We have to see what has been done, what have not been done. You know, uh, from that, uh, we will, uh, you know, develop our variables and, you know, uh, uh, try to find what are the relationship between those variables, independent variables or dependent variables or other. Uh, so, uh, you know, the first step in the research process is to pick the, 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 the concept or the construct of interest to us and, or the, these are generally referred as the variables. The variable has uh, important qualities, which is uh, first, either he influence or to be influenced. If the variable influence, then we call it, you know, the independent uh, variable. If it is to be influenced, then that what we call it dependent variables. And also, uh, to be a variable, it must have at least uh, two attributes or varying, or what we call uh, characteristics or quantity. And in this case, the minimum should be a dummy variable where we have yes or no, uh, one or zero. Uh, so, uh, uh, we have three types of variables. We have independent variables, as I just say, those variables will influence the dependent variable. So, independent vari variables always influence another variable. And dependent variables is to be influenced. So, uh, 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 independent variable will affect the dependent variable. And another one, we have intervening variables. And here, where we have two types. Either it is a moderator or a mediator. Mediator means that um, if let's say we assume that independent variable A and dependent variable B and uh, uh, mediator C. So if A to influence B, but that influence should go through C, means that from A to C, then C to B. So this is what we call intervening variable C as a mediator. And the moderator, when we have a relationship between A and B, independent variable and dependent variable, then the intervening or the moderator moderating that relationship. So it has influenced the relationship, not the variables. If the relationship, let's say, it is strong positive relationship, so when the intervening variable as a moderator, he may make it stronger or he may weaken it. So that we call a moderator. Uh, so uh, as I say, uh, you know, uh, quantitative research is about relationships between the variables, cause and effect. 
So it is either coercional or a coercion. Uh, so uh, uh, the hypothesis uh, to be developed, you know, uh, based on the theory uh, to show us uh, the direction of that relationship or that cause and effect. Uh, so uh, the result of the posited or suggested uh, relationship between uh, different two variables can be true or false. So when uh, you have a say question and you go and survey the literature review and the theory, so you come and formulate your hypothesis. Let's say uh, uh, GDP has a positive impact on CO2 uh, emission. Uh, more GDP, more CO2 emission. And this is uh, theoretically uh, proven. And so you want to prove that in Malaysia, for example. Uh, but your result after you collect the data and the analysis could be true, yes, you, you come from that uh, theory, or could be no. Means that maybe in Malaysia they are using more renewable energy. So when, uh, you know, uh, uh, having too much in the, you know, production, the GDP increase, but we are not polluting the environment, for example. So the hypothesis also created for testing to see if what has happened posited is correct or otherwise, as I just now explained. So again, after in quantitative research, after you uh, establish your hypothesis, after you establish your research question and your hypothesis, then uh, there you will, you know, uh, decide what are the variables that you are going to select or choose in order to explain that phenomenon or that relationship. Uh, so, but before you collect the data, then you need to operationalize your variables. Define a variable in a way that makes it clear what we need to intend to observe and how to measure it. How you measure it. Usually we will see previous researchers how they measure the variables. And uh, either we adopt or adapt uh, that, that measurement. Then after that, uh, also, a measurement could be, for example, I just I give here two examples, occupational, for example, professional, uh, you know, uh, or manager, or own business, uh, not employed. So this is, uh, you know, a measurement for occupation. occupation. And it uh, could be our study per week, uh, for example, nine, uh, less than five, five to ten, more than ten, so another measurement. But later we will see a different level uh, of measurement like now here we have, you see, uh, for example, here we have party affiliation, uh, either it is rep Republican, Independent or Democrat, for example, in the United States. So we can give number to one, two, three. So you can see here the numbers one, two and three does not have any meaning, but just it is uh, to, to uh, reflect, the, the, you know, the, the type of, of the party affiliation. So that's what we call it a nominal, uh, you know, a, a measurement. So let's go one by one. Uh, we have the nominal, which is uh, attributes are only name, and this is the weakest in quantitative research because those number doesn't doesn't have any meaning. I can put a Democrat number one, Republican number two, Independent number three. I can put Independent number one, Democrat number three, and, and, and Republican number two. So whatever the arrangement, you know, does not affect. The second is ordinary, the attribute can be ordered, and this, the order is very important and number is very important. For example, you put uh, how many uh, hours study per week, then you put uh, one, nine, uh, two, uh, one to five, uh, three, six to ten, uh, four, eleven to fifteen, uh, five, more than uh, fifteen or sixteen and above. Uh, so that is in order, uh, you cannot, you know, uh, Mix, let's say uh, one, uh, one to five, two, zero. You know, you cannot do that. Then we have interval, a uh, distance is meaningful, we see later, and the ratio is absolute zero when we have, you know, uh, numbers, let's say weight, uh, you know, uh, 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 the height, you know. Uh, so, um, nominal measurement, as I say uh, here, uh, for example, you have. Uh, jersey number, the value name, uh, the attribute uniquely uh, classification, the value does not imply any ordering uh, of the cases, for example, jersey number in football and dates in a calendar. And uh, nominal measurement is uh, uh, this variables consist uh, of categories uh, that are non-ordered, for example, race or ethnicity, 
uh, one Malay, uh, two Chinese, three Indian, uh, four uh, Sabah, five Sarawak, six uh, others. Uh, so, um, uh, a simple categorical uh, variable is binary or a dichotomous variable, or uh, call it uh, yes or no, one or zero. For example, did you uh, consider uh, women uh, vote for uh, the ordinance uh, change or not? Then you can say yes or no. When used uh, as an independent variable, it is often referred as dummy uh, variable. Then we have an ordinal, as I say, uh, these variables are also categorical, but uh, we can say that some categories are higher than others. For example, income tax bracket, social class, level of education. However, we cannot measure the distance between categories. So uh, only uh, which is higher or lower, because uh, if let's say uh, education level, for example, one, uh, no formal education, two, primary school, uh, uh, three, secondary school. So the distance between secondary school to primary school is not, is it the same between primary school and no, uh, formal education? No. So we cannot measure that, the distance between, you know, uh, the categories. Uh, hence, we cannot say that uh, someone is twice as educated as someone else. So can also uh, be used as a dependent, uh, you know, uh, variable. Then we have, let's say, uh, ordinary measurement when attribute can be ranked, you know, ordered. Uh, for example, distance between attribute do not have any meaning. For example, uh, code education attribute, as I said just now, uh, less than uh, high school, uh, some high school, uh, high school degree, uh, some college. So the distance, you know, from one to two is, uh, is not the same from three to four, uh, to four. From here, some high school to less than High school is not the same from here to here. So the interval, uh, we have uh, variables of uh, this type are called scalar or index variables uh, in the sense they provide a scale or index that allow us to measure uh, between uh, levels. Uh, so uh, we can not, uh, not only measure which is higher or lower, uh, but uh, also how much so. So distance is measured between points uh, of the on the scale with uh, even units. A good example is temperature based on, uh, uh, for example, uh, Celsius. But uh, when the distance between attribute has meaning, uh, for example, temperature uh, distance from 30 to 40 uh, is the same as distance be between uh, from 70 and 80. But you have to know that the ratio. Uh, uh, don't make any sense. So 80 degrees is not twice as hot as 40 degrees. Uh, you know, uh, that's that's the logic. Yes, we can see that, uh, you know, uh, 80 is twice 40, but, uh, you know, the, uh, in terms of distance, but in terms of feeling uh, that, 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 that temperature is not the same. Then we have the most stronger one is uh, ratio. So uh, similar to interval level uh, variables in uh, that, it can measure the distance between two points, but can also uh, in absolute term. So ratio measures that uh, have the true value of zero, unlike interval measures. So if I say, you know, how much you weight, if there is no weight, zero is zero. Uh, if someone is uh, 20 kilogram, is 20 kilogram. If someone 40 kilogram, is 40 kilogram. And we can say that distance yes is make, has a meaning. Uh, we can say uh, this guy 40 kilogram is twice heavy than the, the, that, that, that that another one which is only 20 kg. So for example, one can say that uh, someone is twice as rich as someone else based on the value of their asset since they have. Uh, seems to have uh, no money is based on starting point of zero. If someone has no more money, then then that one is, is zero, right? So we can have starting point. So uh, ratio has an absolute zero that is a meaningful. Uh, can uh, construct a meaningful uh, ratio, you know, a fraction, uh, for example, number of uh, client in the past six months. Also, it is meaningful to say that uh, we had twice as many clients in this period as we did in the previous six months, but others variables that uh, we cannot have them. Uh, so this is the, the measurement hierarchy. 
Uh, you can see the weakest is a nominal and the strongest is the ratio. Then, uh, you know, a nominal that is the weakest, then come ordinal, then a better an interval, then only we come to the ratio. So now we talk about the reliability and validity. Reliability is measures that give consistent results. For example, when uh, we design a questionnaire and we see if the question is reliable or no, means that we want to see if the question that we ask really gives the constant uh, meaning. Means that when I ask that question, is it respondent A understanding the same way that is respondent B understood it? If they have understanding differently, that's me, my, reliability, my question is not reliable. And the validity is measure uh, that what measure have uh, or should be uh, measured. So uh, uh, if let's say, ask the question, is that question really measures exactly, uh, you know, what really it should be measured? or it measured in different way. So if I ask a question about poverty, but that question does not have any relation about poverty, so it is not valid. But if I ask a question about poverty, and I ask, uh, you know, uh, have you uh, eaten, for example, yesterday? Yeah, it has a relationship with poverty. If someone has not eaten, means because doesn't have money, so he's poor, for example, maybe. So uh, we have different type of validity. We have internal validity, we have external validity, we have construct validity, and we have uh, a conclusion uh, validity. So um, the internal validity assume uh, there is a relationship in this study. Is the relationship is a causal one or no? You know, uh, means that. Uh, if we want to study a relationship between A and B, is that a relationship, you know, a causal, is that A really cause B or no? That it must have that. Then external validity. So we assume that there is a causal relationship after we establish the first one and we say that there is, there is a causal relationship between A and B. Uh, you know? Uh, 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 so assuming that there is a causal relationship in this study between the construct of the cause and effect. Can we generalize this effect to another person, place of, or time? So, if there is a causal relationship between A and B, could we generalize, you know, this relationship between A and B to another people? If, let's say, on student in, in Kampa, so can we generalize it on student or student in, in Malaysia? Or over time, last 10 years, is the same like uh, this year or 10 years, uh, you know, uh, later? Uh, then, we have a construct validity. So assuming there is a causal relationship in this study, uh, can we claim that the program reflected well our construct of the program and that our measure reflected well our idea of the construct of the measure? Or let's say in another way, construct validity is the degree to which a test measure what it claims exactly or uh, 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 to be uh, measuring. So. Uh, usually in a classical model of test validity, constant validity is one of the three main types of the validity evidence alongside con uh, you know, content validity and criterion uh, validity. Then we have the last one, con conclusion validity. You know, uh, so if we establish the internal, external and construct validity, then we come to a conclusion. In this study, there is a relationship between the two variables. So, uh, you know, our, you know, um, uh, 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 variables uh, chosen, uh, you know, is valid and our, or maybe questionnaire uh, that uh, uh, constructed is valid. So, uh, why is the quantitative research? So, quantitative research often start with expectation about what you are going to find and then test that expectation. Uh, so, uh, if let's say uh, I have seen that there is so many people are poor in Kampa, then my question, why those people are poor? Why they cannot, you know, move out of poverty? So this kind of question that, you know, I, it comes to me. Then I go and collect data and, and ask them about their activities, about their income, you know, you know, and, 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 and from that data, I, 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 I may answer, you know, my question. So follow a scientific method. First, as I say, I define the question. My question is that uh, why those people are, are poor, why they cannot go out of poverty. Then I will, I will gather information, then I will form the hypothesis based on, you know, theory or concept or 
previous empirical studies and design the experiment how I'm going to collect my data you know is it about questionnaire about you know phone on phone or via email or Facebook then perform the experiment and data collected I analyze it and interpret the data and draw conclusion and publish my result so this is you know a systematic scientific method now from top to bottom uh, so what are the common type of quantitative research method? We have first experimental research, we have survey, meta-analysis, uh, quantitative uh, case study, applied behavior analysis, and longitudinal. Let's go one by one. In experimental research, when you compare two or more groups that are similar except for uh, one factor of variable. For example, you want to, you want to uh, see if a new uh, method of uh, teaching for example now we are talking about online teaching you want to see if is it online teaching is much better you know uh, uh, than a traditional one and then you bring uh, two groups one you teach them online one you teach them in a classical one or physical one and you compare these two groups and uh, see which uh, group of people performing better so that you can decide you know which method is better so statistics it's also about statistical analysis of the data uh, conditions are highly controlled you know and and variables are manipulated by the researcher manipulation means that you change you know the the, the measurement of the variables and you ma manipulate them to suit your 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 your, your research uh, uh, purpose uh, the effect of or, or the influence of of course so we, as i say for example of the method a new method of teaching and we will see if does really have influence on effect on, on student performance or not uh, so uh, it also we have uh, true randomized experimental design uh, uh, the first independent variables are as i say manipulated usually by an experimenter uh, sometimes by the context uh, so the experimenter or the researcher will change you know the position of or the, or, or, or the measurement of the variables, you know, or they change even the variable itself and, 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 and bring other control variables to suit or to fit, you know, uh, the research purpose. Also, second participant must be assigned randomly to various conditions of groups. Uh, so when this condition is not met, it is a quasi-experimental uh, design. Uh, so in randomized experimental design, you should choose your participant randomly. So uh, when I want to see if the new method of teaching, uh, online teaching, is uh, more effective than a physical one or no, so I will choose my respondent, the groups of the participant randomly. So I will not, for example, I will just uh, select those who have higher CGPA, I put them in online, and those who have a weaker CGPA, I put them in traditional, and this is a bias. Uh, so the, the respondent must be chosen randomly. Uh, in experimental research, what is the advantage? Uh, it it gives researcher a tight control over independent factors. He can manipulate the independent factor or control variables as you know as much as uh, you know or the way he, he wants or the way that fit the research purpose. But also allow researcher to test a key relationship with uh, as a few confounding factors are possible and allow for a direct co causal testing. But it has a disadvantage where usually a smaller n uh, and a smaller of in, uh, number of independent variables than surveys uh, because it is an experiment, uh, your sample size or n uh, or is really uh, few, maybe 30, maybe 20, but uh, if we go to uh, cross-sectional data, for example, or survey or questionnaire, one, uh, it is about 300, 400, 1000. And also number of variables you cannot because it, you are going to control the variables maybe you will have two or three only but other uh, survey you may have more than that sometimes give up a large uh, you know uh, amount of generalizability in favor of uh, direct causal uh, analysis and control and it require a large amount of planning training and time you know you have to train the participant you train also the researchers and that consume a lot of time but in surveys, methods are different from experimental. Uh, uh, they rely on existing uh, variation in the sample population to obtain a representative sample. So surveys also control uh, for the influence of external factors by asking a lot of questions from the same people. Uh, so uh, you have so many types of surveys. You know, remember, surveys are not the same thing as questionnaire. 
that is in-depth interviews, observation, content, analysis uh, could be also used in survey set. Questionnaire are a specific method of obtaining structured set of survey data. So questionnaire is a part of survey. Then um, uh, we have many ways how you know we do our surveys, but also we have uh, potential problems in questionnaire and, and surveys. As for example, obtaining a representative sample. Uh, sometimes your, your representative sample is a little bit biased. It will not uh, really, you know, represent the entire population. For example, if I want to study uh, stress among students and I choose uh, Utah student as a representative of Malaysia, it, it may give me, you know, a, I, I may not be able to generalize that result because why? Maybe Utah student, because they have three trimesters, the, 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 the timetable is loaded, and they don't have time, you know, for leisure. So always they are stressed. Compare, for example, student in USM or UM, they have two uh, semesters only. Uh, then uh, they have, you know, they are more, you know, uh, have free time, you know, in, in, in entertaining themselves and, and, and having some uh, refreshment or some break. Uh, so uh, we can see in 1930, you know, literally, you know, digest poll when Franklin Roosevelt predicted to lose uh, in uh, 1936 uh, uh, presidential election by a landslide when they did a survey, but uh, at, at the end he won uh, by a landslide. Uh, so you can see, because I may be the survey, the respondent, the participant on that survey, they were not really representing the world population and accounting for the outlier in the sample. Outlier are very problems, you know, in, in survey data. For example, what is the best undergraduate major uh, if you want uh, a high school, you know? Uh, uh, one outlier is a geography major name, for example, Michael Jordan accounted for a, a, a huge skew in average salaries for graduates because he, at that time he made 80 million per year. So uh, if you compare it with other, you know, graduate schools, they, you know, making a few, uh, maybe 100,000 per year. So, you know, it makes, you know, a huge skew, you know, in the average salaries. And that is not good. So in uh, quantitative data research, when we have questionnaires or surveys, we always, we have to look for those outliers and remove them uh, from uh, the surveys. What are the advantage and disadvantage of surveys and questionnaires? So it has two most major advantages, which is can be easily scaled for a small or a large studies, and a lot of search to collect a lot of data uh, on a wide range of topics. Uh, so that one of the advantage. But disadvantage is uh, simply become a big issue if you want to generalize uh, to a larger population, as I say, sometimes your sampling does not really represent the whole population, and and here you have problem to generalize your finding. Uh, most survey data cannot be used for a true causal test. Another uh, problem, however, uh, uh, longitudinal data can help alleviate this problem, but not completely. For example, if I study uh, uh, what are the factors that uh, lead stress among uh, students, for example, in Malaysia. Uh, then, uh, I did study now in 2020. Is that the finding applicable in 2040? Because the environment changed, or maybe even after five, five years, the environment is changing, and, 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 and this, you know, virus uh, who, who found to be a significant uh, you know, uh, imp significantly impacting the stress among students, they may not be after five years or after, you know, uh, 10 years. But uh, to solve that problem, we will have a longitudinal data where it deals with cross-section plus time series. So we will discuss about this later in coming slides. So we have a meta-analysis. So a uh, numerous experimental studies with reported statistical analysis are compared and dis distinguishes strange and the effect size or the influence of the depend independent variable on the dependent variable can be compared. Uh, so let's see here what is it. Uh, we have uh, uh, five steps, you know, uh, for, you know, this uh, meta-analysis where you go and uh, collect all, you know, uh, previous studies or particular, for example, stress among students and, and do a meta-analysis. So you define what is the same question and, and, and and, and review literature review, for example, why are stu students in, in Malaysia are stressed? Uh, 
So this is our question, you know, we want to answer that. So we go and gather as much as we can uh, the relevant literature review. So we, we select the appropriate studies that investigated that issue. We extract data from that studies, then we analyze the data and we come to a conclusion, which is, you see, it is um, quantitative, but, you know, the data gathered in, in secondary source, we will... We, 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 uh, we will de be depending only on previous published, uh, you know, uh, uh, research or articles uh, to come to conclusion. And this is, you know, mostly used, you know, when we have, you know, uh, 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 inconclusive, you know, uh, conclusions or, or findings. So meta-analysis would be used for the following purposes, to establish statistical significance with studies that have conflicting results, as I say, inconclusive finding. Some studies, they found it positive, sometimes they find it negative. Some of studies, they found no relationship between two variables. So you come, you gather all those studies, you know, uh, what they have found, what the method they use, you make an analysis, and you come to a conclusion. To develop a more correct estimate of the effect magnitude. And some study they found the effect is large, some of them the effect is small, some of them you say is moderate. Uh, so uh, by doing that meta analysis, uh, you will develop a more efficient and effect and correct, you know, estimate of that, uh, you know, effect. And also to provide a more complex analysis of harm, safety data, and benefit. And to examine subgroups with individual numbers that are not statistically uh, significant. Then we have a case study, uh, it's also called a single case design, where described numerically a specific case can be a group or individual, can be a company. Most of the case studies is about companies. And, and now, nowadays, uh, many, uh, you know, uh, uh, databases, you know, uh, like Emerald and Sage, they are really uh, in need of that type of studies, case studies. And so may test or generate hypothesis, and the result often presented with tables and graphs. Uh, so in case study is mostly it's not like we use too much regression but per se we use a descriptive scenario about that particular group or about a particular uh, company so we, we use a lot of tables and graph to describe uh, you know that uh, uh, phenomenon or that case or that company or that uh, group so the case study analysis can be broken down into the following steps First, we identify the most important facts around in the case. You know, what is uh, need to be investigated? What is the problem? What is the issue of that particular group or that uh, company? How this company makes success in a short period? We want, for example, to know that. So that other, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneur or other new companies or fresh companies may follow. So uh, then we identify the key issues or... or that arise uh, from that particular group of company. Uh, specifying alternative, you know, courses of action, you know, uh, in order to, to overcome that limitation or that issue that company has done this and this and this, you know, then evaluate that. What are the alternative for that actions that could be better, you know, uh, to give a better finding or a better uh, performance. Then we evaluate each course of action and we recommend uh, the best course of action, you know, and those new, uh, for example, companies, they can use those actions. But uh, this is, uh, also we have uh, secondary data uh, where we have a time series data analysis uh, cross-sectional data analysis or panel data analysis. Uh, let's start with time series data analysis. Uh, the data are ordered by time. So uh, we have, let's say, uh, one company or one individual or one uh, country, but uh, so many years of data. So time series data is a set of observation of the value that is uh, uh, valuable uh, takes at different times. Uh, such data may be collected at a regular time interval, for example, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually. And an example, for example, consumption and disposal income uh, for Malaysia from 1992 to 2013. Uh, this is a time series. But uh, what are the terms and, and concepts? Uh, so usually we have dependence. Dependence refer to the association of the two observation with the same variable. Uh, at the prior uh, uh, time of point. So, you know, 
uh, we have, let's say, income in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. And usually, uh, before we study time series, we have to see something which is really important stationary, which shows uh, the mean value of the series that remains constant over time period. Uh, if past effect accumulate and the value increase toward infinity, uh, then stationary is not met. If the stationary is not met, then we cannot analyze the data. So what we do, usually we do uh, differentiate. Uh, used to make the series stationary. If it is not stationary, we make a differenti differenti differentiation or first order. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, also uh, we call it to detrend and to control the auto correlations. However, sometimes series analysis do not require differentiation, and an over differentiated series can produce inaccurate estimate. Uh, so, of course, uh, um, you know, s s statistical software such as EBUS, uh, they have the proper test to, to check for that. And specification, uh, how we are going to analyze it, we may uh, involve in testing for the linear or non-linear relationship of dependent variables by using models such as uh, ARIMA, ARC, GARCH, VAR, cointegration, and etc. Basically, there is three types of cointegration, famous cointegration of time series. We have Johansson cointegration. In Johansson cointegration, there is one, uh, or I say, uh, assumption where all your series or all your variables must be co-integrated at the first order, or what we call I1. Uh, but sometimes that is impossible to have all your series are co-integrated or, uh, or integrated at the first order, or, or uh, you know, or first difference, or stationary at the first difference. Uh, so another test can we call it autoregressive distributed leg or ARDL, whereby uh, it's fine if your series are uh, integrated between I0 or at level, stationary at level, or stationary at first difference I1. Uh, so uh, in that case, also we can establish co-integration. But in some cases, uh, we have some of the series are not even stationary at the first uh, difference, but only stationary at the second difference. And this is neither uh, Johansson uh, test nor the ARDL can be used. And we use the TYDL, what we call it Toda Yamamoto um, Dolado uh, uh, Lot Lotki Paul uh, in 1995. Uh, so, uh, whatever the series are, uh, you know, stationary at I0, I1, or I2, or what we call it at level uh, first difference or second difference, we still can establish that, you know, co integration or, uh, you know, a bound uh, test. So uh, after that, uh, we have cross-sectional data. Uh, so data that characterized by individual units. Uh, so uh, uh, we, this unit may refer to people, companies, sector, or countries. Uh, cross-sectional data, data collected on the same point of time, only one time. An example, consumption and disposal, uh, dis, uh, disposable income of different Asian countries in 1990. So we have only one year, but I have all Asian countries. So what are uh, some practical examples of cross-sectional data? We utilize cross-sectional data mostly in finance, economics, and various areas of social sciences. And in apply microeconomics, for example, they use it in supply labor market, public finance, industrial organization theory, and health finance. And political research also, they use it to break down demography and electro uh, electoral uh, uh, engagement. Uh, in also, in comparing financial statement or of two or more companies in retail, also they use it, uh, you know, uh, or to study the expenditure trend of male and female of any age group. Also in business, uh, research they use it to study the response of or to a single change uh, from people coming from different socioeconomic status uh, uh, from a special geographic uh, section. Also, in medical research and healthcare research, they used to analyze how many kids, for example, of age between 4 to 14 are prone to low calcium deficiency. Uh, so, here this table, I will give you uh, the most, uh, you know, famous test that we use cross-sectional data. The most one famous one, we call it ordinary last square or OLS. Uh, if data follow a normal distribution and do not have uh, heterogeneity, uh, problem we can use OLS. 
but uh, if the data do not follow the normal distribution and has a homogeneity problem uh, then we cannot use OLS but it is good to use uh, the GLS or we call generalized last square but if the data do not follow normal distribution but have a homogeneity problem and also it's good for secondary data uh, we use weighted last, uh, last square or WLS so for GLS uh, is good for primary data collection, which is caution. Uh, for uh, WLS, it for secondary data when you collect data from secondary sources. And also, uh, we have a, a constraint linear regression where constraint coefficient to be equal uh, to each other. Uh, we have regression with measurement error. One of, of the assumption of regression is that the predictive variables are measured with errors. Also, we have multi uh, variate regression uh, more uh, than one uh, dependent variable and run together uh, it is same as similarly as and uh, related to regression and we have binary lo logistic regression when your dependent variable is binary between for example yes or no dummy variable uh, yes or no one or zero IVs or independent variable can be any type can be also uh, binary or dummy or or continues whatever uh, this can be run also in the logit probit and tobit models you know uh, you may uh, search on, on that and then we have ordinary regression when the dependent variable is like a scale or, 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 or the form and the independent variable uh, can be any type uh, this can be run and there also logit probit tobit mode uh, multinominal and multi-level uh, model and uh, one of the, 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 the famous uh, uh, model which is uh, gaining, uh, you know, uh, high, what we say, uh, intention in uh, publishing uh, articles and research nowadays is a structural equation model or what we call the path diagram or measurement model measure the relationship and contribution uh, of different uh, observable variable as well as latent variable. Uh, if the sample size is small, uh, less than uh, 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 300, uh, better to use a PLS. Um, the most famous is smart PLS. If the sample size is big, more than 300, then better to use AMOS. Uh, for both uh, cases, uh, we can use also Stata software, we can use uh, 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 also um, uh, uh, smart PLS, and also can use for factor analysis. And also we can use ANOVA, MANOVA to check the variance uh, or uh, uh, same or of two dependent variables or no. Uh, here the data factors variable uh, should be in categorical variable. And we have a chi-square test to check the mean uh, are same for two variables. Here the data should be in Likert scale or the form. And we have t-test also to check the mean are same or of, for two variables uh, where the data should be in ratio scale. Uh, so in, in, in lecture number uh, five, uh, we are going uh, to have uh, one uh, lecture class, full lecture class of both structural equation modeling, and we are going to use smart PLS exactly. Uh, for others, uh, like uh, ordinary last square, uh, time series data, uh, using um, uh, Johansson uh, co-integration, ARDL and TYDL, and uh, also a panel data analysis, uh, you can check uh, 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 my videos in YouTube channel and you, uh, you yourself you know, discover and understand. I have uh, recorded uh, videos that explain all these data analysis step by step and how to use the if use, you know, uh, uh, software to analyze that data. And then after we have also a panel data. A panel data, or we call it a pool data, set have uh, both time series and cross section compounded together. For example, uh, we say in time series consumption and disposable income among uh, in Malaysia from 90 to 2013. Cross section, we say the consumption and disposable income uh, uh, for uh, for Asian countries, but only in one year, 90s and 90. But panel data, we can have a consumption and disposable income among Asian countries let's say Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and Singapore, and from the period 90 to 2013. Uh, so here we have panel data. Uh, in panel data analysis, mainly we have three uh, main approaches. We have independently pulled uh, panel, or, or we, 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 we use OLS, but uh, 
Uh, also, we can use a random effect model or a fixed effect model. So how we decide between uh, these uh, three or between the random and the fixed effect, we use the Hausman test, you know, and the Hausman test will tell us which is uh, best uh, fitted to that data. Is it a random um, uh, model or the fixed model? Then we have longitudinal data, which is also type of panel data. But here, for example, you have the questionnaire, but that questionnaire is repeated in many uh, times. Uh, for example, you uh, uh, distribute the questionnaire to a group of people. Then after you come back after six months, you give them the same questionnaire, they, they answer. Then you come back another six months, you give them the same questionnaire, each time the same question to see the changes. So individual or group research conducted across time, subject attribution is a major problem and uh, preserving uh, confidentiality is also difficult and a specific standardized tool may change over time. So those are the, the difficulties. Sometimes it's really difficult to, uh, you know, uh, go and find those people that you give them the questionnaire and, 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 and uh, ask them to do it again. Some of people also, uh, they may answer exactly what they have answered as, as before. They still can remember, you know, the answers and they don't want to, uh, you know, uh, give, uh, you know, uh, different, you know, answers. So we have this type of, you know, uh, another one is uh, because the characteristics of, of, of the, or the environment is changing, you know, especially nowadays, you know, the speed of change is, is, is very fast. And so when you take... You know, six months maybe is too much. If you take only three months, as I say, maybe the respondent, they still remember how they answered before and they give you the same answer. So uh, how we make sure if, for example, in quantitative data research, we collect secondary data, how we are going to make sure uh, that our data is valid? We have to evaluate it or applicability to project objective. Uh, so uh, we have asked those questions. Does the data have to answer the question set out in the problem definition? This data that I gather in secondary source, let's say time series or cross-sectional data or panel data, is really can answer my research question. Is my, if my research question, for example, why people are poor in Kampa? Why people cannot go out or cannot move out from poverty in Kampa? So if I collect the data, but that data lacks a lot of uh, information, like for example, the activities that uh, people they are, uh, you know, uh, do uh, uh, engaging in, you know, uh, their behavior. So we cannot answer that really that questions. So that secondary data in that case, maybe is based only on income or expenditure is no more valid because it will not tell me why those people are poor and why they can't move on with poverty. Uh, so uh, uh, does the data apply to the, the time period of interest? If I want to study uh, this, let's say in 2020, but the data that I collect, uh, that I have, the secondary data is very outdated, maybe 2010 or 2015. So it's no more valid. Does the data apply uh, to the population of interest? And so if I want to study about, for example, uh, po poverty among, uh, you know, uh, what we call them uh, farmers in Kampa, but the data I gather is about general people or workers or, or other uh, people, but it's not about farmers. So it is not also uh, valid for that. Uh, do the other terms and uh, variable classification present and apply uh, to that data? And are the units of measurement comparable? You know, uh, if I want to measure the uh, poverty, you know, as poverty uh, line income, so the data I collected, it has that uh, measurement or no, or it has different measurement uh, that which is not compa uh, comparable with mine. So another one, uh, if possible, go to the original source of, of the data. Uh, so if the data collected by the money, uh, what we call uh, EPU, uh, Economic Planning Unit uh, of Malaysia, or Department of Statistic of Malaysia, then you have to go to them and collect the data. And also, is the cost of the data acquisition worth it or no? Uh, not all, all the data or secondary data is free of charge. Some of the data you need to buy. So when you buy it and see the data, or before you buy it, you, see, you have to check, you know, uh, and observe this data. Is it really worth, if you spend 10, let's say 10K on it, uh, is it really uh, worth it or no? If let's say it's not going to answer your most of your same question, then it is not really feasible. Uh, is there a possibility of bias? 
I mean that when they collect the data, those people who collect the data, because it is secondary, is they are trustworthy. I mean, they are trained. Uh, if, if there is any biasness in collecting data or not, uh, can be accurately, uh, accuracy of the data collection be verified or not. If we can go back to the source and verify it, it's fine. But if we cannot verify that data, maybe the data is not from very well now, you know, uh, a department established like uh, in government department like uh, uh, Department of Statistics of Malaysia, but the data is gathered from other researchers or students. And then uh, here the question is, is the student used a uh, very scientific way in collecting the data? Is the student are aware of, of, of the, the, the steps and the concepts of data collection or not? So uh, how we are going to make sense of uh, quantitative studies? Uh, first, uh, think about the sample. Who does this represent? That is the most difficult part. As I say and, and emphasize again, that if your sample size is not representing the population, then your results are biased. Uh, read the method section. Uh, how did previous researcher they create the measurement? Could you use this measurement? Uh, to your study or no? Uh, do you believe that the measure represents the intended concept or no? Uh, if the measurement of your poverty, or as I say, a poverty line income, but other studies they use uh, relative uh, poverty measurement or comparative poverty measurement, which is not like an absolute one, so the measurement is not matching and you cannot use that data. What are the potential confounding variables? You know, uh, you have to find them and see if they have an effect on your conceptual, you know, framework on your study, on your result or not. Uh, think about generalizability of the study. Uh, if the data collected can be generalized, you know, to the world population or not. The simple uh, chosen respondent uh, can uh, also really represent the world population, therefore you can generalize it or not. Think about whether the analysis is claiming to be, uh, you know, test of causality, uh, what was the method, how is causality established, if we want to see if one variable or what are the factors affecting poverty, you know, what are the variables that, you know, we need to use. We cannot just throw the variables to the model, but we have to develop them based on very well established scientific way, based on theory, based on hypothesis, based on concept, based on previous empirical studies. Then interpretation matters also just as much uh, in, in quantitative study as in qualitative study. Uh, so both of them, when we interpret our result in qualitative study, it's really important to come out with, with uh, a theory or to come out with uh, a rich descriptive of phenomenon. But also in quantitative, it's really important because uh, the, the software, when you analyze data, will give you numbers. You know, it gives you outcomes, it gives you significance. How you are going to interpret that is also really important. How you justify those numbers or how, uh, those relationships, you know, how to justify them uh, you know, is also very important. So what are the strengths of quantitative research? Uh, you can manipulate your numbers to create a visual image, example graph. Manipulating doesn't mean you change the numbers that you got but you change the coding or classification. For example, you gather data about income, so you keep it an open-ended, how much your income, people say someone 500, someone 900, but you want to graph it, so you cannot graph it because you have so many numbers, so you can have it as a categories, like bracket, uh, one between uh, or less than 500, two, 501 to 1,000, three, 1,001 to 2,000, Four, uh, 2001 to 5000, uh, five above 5000. So you see, manipulate uh, the, the, the data to create a visual graph or visual tables. Uh, concept can be measured and directly compared to previous subsequent work. Uh, so when, when you get a finding, you will find that one variable has a significant impact to another, and you compare that with previous empirical studies, and you see if that relationship or established relationship is uh, confirmed by theory or no, if that finding confirmed the theory or no. So also, in, in quantitative research, there may be a direct correlation between cause and effect. Uh, this is uh, the idea. It may be also possible to generalize the word external validity uh, in the pre uh, prediction. Uh, so uh, as, as we say, one of the major uh, you know, advantage of uh, uh, quantitative is we can generalize when we have a very well-representative 
uh, or representative uh, sample size to the population, so we can generalize that and we will have extended validity. So the breadth of the uh, of coverage or uh, of a big population, and so uh, since uh, the uh, sample size you know chosen or selected is well rep representing the population, and then the depth and the coverage of that you know uh, result or finding is has uh, is a huge to the world population. Let's say student in Malaysia. So, but also it has weaknesses. What are the weaknesses of quantitative research? Uh, the world may not be equal to the sum of the part. Uh, as I say, and this is especially if uh, your sample size is not well representative of population. We study stress among students in Utah, and we found that students are mostly stressed because they, 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 they are too much overloaded with, with, with courses per trimester. But it may not be the case in universities such as Malaysia, USM. They may not. So we cannot generalize. Lack of, uh, of depth, I, uh, uh, example looking at just one part of the world. Uh, so in quantitative, as we say, uh, we can answer the question of what, but we cannot answer of how and why. We will, we will not understand the whole scenario, but we understand a part of the scenario. We understand what caused that, but how and why, we just speculate. You know, based on our logic or, or understanding, and also defining everything in terms of number is really risky when dealing with human, especially human behavior is changing. And I give you an example here. For example, ask a question. Um, uh, you ask people if they are happy, uh, for example, and give them to range between zero to ten. Someone he is uh, uh, happy. Um, uh, Let's say above the average, he, he gives seven. But uh, someone uh, happy, the same happiness with that particular, if we, let's say we, is, we, we, we see it, in the same happiness, but he may give you eight or may give you six. So they have the same level of happiness, but they give you different numbers or different uh, category. Uh, someone, uh, you ask people also, do you agree or disagree uh, with this uh, law, for example, or rules? Uh, someone he will say actually he strongly agree then he put for you strongly agree number five another one also he strongly agree but he give you only agree uh, as, as a four uh, you see but they have the same level of uh, of agreement so uh, that will be very risky ultimately uh, everything is uh, quantitative sorry here uh, also uh, risky uh, so uh, this is uh, what uh, we, um, uh, we should know about quantitative research uh, method. I hope that you got you know, the, 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 the main idea of when and how we use quantitative uh, research method. Uh, if you have any question or you still have any doubt, uh, please uh, give me your, uh, your comment and I will answer, you know, uh, try my best to answer as soon as possible I can. I wish you good luck and thank you very much.